There was nothing like the days our kids were born. Uh, our next guests want childbirth to be safe. They want it to be a safe experience that you'll treasure. As we imagine better health, what happens during and after that experience and how it's all completely personalized to your needs and wishes. Dr. Molly Barrett is a CHI Health OBGYN and Katie Offenbacher is a lactation counselor. Good morning to both Hi, of you. Hi, good morning. Um, can we talk about the approach here, the approach to labor and delivery? Uh, I guess, uh, what makes yours different? Well, CHI is a big system with lots of different hospitals and each of the hospitals and each of the labor and deliveries brings their own um, sort of personality to the labor experience. Um, mainly my deliveries occur at Emanuel and um, I find that especially there, at all the hospitals, but especially there, the goal is to provide, of course, safe, excellent, competent care without losing sight of the fact that this is a miraculous time, mm, the creation yeah. of a family. Right and what the women are going through, what their partners are going through, and their extended family mm -hmm. is something that, you know, yes, we want to deliver excellent medical care, but we also want to be respectful of what's going on personally it's for them. It's not just the physical delivery, it's that emotional right. uh, mm -hmm. impact too. There's something called the sacred hour. What, what is that exactly, and what does it mean to you? I love talking about the sacred hour because I feel like that's, um, one of the best things that we can bring for moms, babies, dads, um, everybody in those first few moments of life. And we call it the sacred hour because we want to have people keep in mind that um, it's something that, if at all possible, we want to treat as precious time, really preserve it. Just like you wouldn't interrupt a wedding just to tell somebody something casual, you would never interrupt this time right after a baby's born. Mm -hmm. You would um, regard it as being special and precious mm -hmm. for that family. Yeah, I want to talk about something um, that I really wasn't aware of uh, before I had kids, because I would see people on social media guys in general with their shirts off, with the baby laying on their chest. I'm like, why does, they, why does daddy have his shirt off, right? But it's the skin-to-skin -skin contact that is, is so important, and um, it can have uh, huge benefits. Can yes. you explain that? Absolutely. Ideally, we like skin-to-skin -skin contact to take place between the baby and the mom. And as the baby delivers, um, I as the delivering physician, but everybody in the room immediately, you know, after the head emerges and through the rest of the delivery, immediately we're assessing the baby as well as assessing the mom to make sure that they're safe and healthy. And if they are, our goal is to get the baby right on the mom's mm -hmm. chest, skin to skin, the baby's skin right up against the mom's skin immediately after birth, and let them stay there as the baby progresses through um, an amazing set of stages um, as it transitions from life yeah. in the womb mm -hmm. to life outside the womb. And uh, again, our goal during that first hour, if possible, is to keep the baby on mom's chest, although sometimes that's not possible. Mm -hmm. Either the mom's not um, able to, she's in pain, she's having some kind of complication, in which case, like you said, skin-to-skin yeah. -skin mm -hmm. time with anybody has been shown to be mm -hmm. beneficial for the baby. Including with lactation, Katie. Exactly. What, are you, what are you knowing? Like, what do you know now that we wouldn't have known years ago about right. that contact and what it means for your world as a counselor in lactation? Right. It's amazing to see the transition. If you can allow that baby to go through, we, we have these nine stages of skin to skin. And if you allow the baby to go through those nine stages, you know, without taking it off to do medications or measurements mm -hmm. and those kinds of things, the baby can actually crawl to the breast and start feeding on its own. Wow. Just like nature, you know, wants it to be. Yeah. So it's really amazing to see that, you know, beforehand we'd wrap the baby, swallow it up, take it yeah. to the warmer, and you wouldn't see that. And then, you know, the mom may or may not have difficulty with latching later on. Mm -hmm. So if we can just leave it alone and allow the baby to do its thing, it's amazing to see it breastfeed within wow. that hour. I mentioned your title at the beginning of this, lactation counselor. Mm -hmm. uh, what exactly do you do? What's your role in this? So my role currently, I work with Dr. Margaret Barron here in the office. We like to educate our patients early on. So, you know, not wait till 35, 36 weeks to start talking about breastfeeding, but open up their eyes to it early on, um, about four or five months. Mm -hmm. And then right before, kind of go over what to expect. A lot of moms are scared to death of what, you know, what if I don't do it right? What if it mm -hmm. don't happen? And kind of just give them some tips and um, what kind of what to expect to make an easier transition for them mm -hmm. and the baby. And then what about once the baby's born? Once the baby's born, there's a lactation um, 
consultant on the floor, so mm -hmm. they're able to help um, them with maybe any fears they might have to relieve, any help with breastfeeding uh -huh. tips, as long as there uh, are some RNs on the floor or counselors that can also help in the room um, in recovery and postpartum room also. Uh -huh. And you try to do what you can to accommodate uh, mothers as, as many ways as possible, as long as it's safe. Mm, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes things don't go as smoothly as the parents would want, as you as professionals would want. At CHI Health, what do you have at your disposal to sort of get excellent care to those patients quickly if it's prematurity or something else? Well, you know, like I was saying, each of the hospitals sort of has its own, um, its own quirks, its own unique characteristics. Mm -hmm. At um, Bergen and at Lakeside, we have intensive care professionals there who can attend delivery and then the baby can be taken to the NICU if that's necessary. Mm -hmm. While there, the NICU professionals are very cognizant of how important that time and the bonding still is mm -hmm. for both the health of the baby and the mother. Mm -hmm. um, they found that babies who are allowed to have skin to skin time and have that close time with their moms are more stable in terms of their temperature, their heart rate, mm -hmm. their blood sugars all kinds of objective measures. So wow. even our NICU babies, they try to protect that time for them. At our other hospitals, although there's not necessarily an NICU on site, our neonatologists, neonatal nurse practitioners, those professionals come to the other hospitals to attend delivery, can often manage lower complications, mm -hmm. still on site at those other places. And then of course, all the labor and delivery staff, doctors, nurses, are trained in neonatal resuscitation. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, again, the primary goal is to make sure it's safe. Online at chihealth.com slash labor dash delivery, and we'll link you back to that from our site as well. Thank you both for being here. I feel like we could talk great and information. Right, no, just keep CHI comes all on all the time, and it's great to learn, get, learn uh, this stuff. side of it too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank well, you very much. Have you? I don't know if you two have seen this. Um, I know you met the guy.